I dislike children. Oh, don't get me wrong. They're fun to chew on. You have nothing else than the fridge to eat. But waiting for them to ripen is the worst six years of your life. The little ones are the toughest to handle. They give me the willies. Kids just don't scare as easily these days, which makes it impossible for a fellow like me to get things done when I really need to. <laughs> Sorry, I should stop and make introductions. My name is Fane. I'm Faye. I live off of fear and mischief. Anyway, this is my story, and I figure if I want to get the facts straight, I'd best tell myself rather than let some human get the fable all mixed up. This all happened many Christmases ago, back when the world was not quite as hectic as it is now. Some call it 2018. I've never been too good at keeping track of time, being immortal and all, so I'll just call it the year Phil. Phil started off great, with lots of tricks and mischief to be had upcountry with my family, the Feyborns, or Johansons, if you know us who all enjoy midsummer and the solstice a little more than they should by drinking too much rainbow tea, hunting unicorns. The horn is the best part to eat, I mean, especially with barbecue sauce. But the real problem started around the end of Phil, when we all decided to go up to the North Pole and see Uncle Nick. I mean, yeah, that fat guy in the red suit, he's my uncle. And yes, he's not as jolly as you realize. He had just finished watching his elf slaves finish up with the last bit of toys for his child cult, when he pulled me aside and asked me, Fane... When are you going to stop messing around and get your own horns, wings, and, you know, something? Look, I know it's unusual for Faye my age to still be in heaven or, you know, the other place, or at the very least have my own worshippers, but I'm, I'm happy where I am in life, I told him. You mean living in your parents' basement? Nick commented. It's only been the past 600 years. He harumphed and said, I wouldn't be pushing this issue, but there's something I need to tell you. Your granny cramps is coming, and they want to talk inheritances. I had just finished eating a reindeer leg, and my stomach was suddenly doing knots. Granny cramps was much more strict than Nick, and they were mean, like, really, really mean. Why are they coming here? I, I, I thought you, you guys hated each other. It's because he lost a bet. A voice boomed from the door. Cramps was there, angry as a beehive, taller than three coconut trees. A, 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 a bet? <laughs> Wait, about me? I asked nervously. Betting around here was no small thing. Like, curses come attached with any gambling because we have magic and we get bored just pestering humans. So sometimes we play tricks on each other. And when I saw the sparkle in Cramps' eyes, I knew that they had something delightfully wicked in mind for me. Nick was sure by now you would have earned your wings. I said you'd be halfway towards horns. And yet instead, here you sit lazy as a frog with no hop. You're a bee with no buzz, Fane. You need to get your act together. Cramps. <laughs> you don't understand. It's harder to be a fave these days than ever before. I think you just don't want to put in the work. Which is why we agreed that if we both failed this bet, you would be cursed by Christmas. See, a curse is always bad, and Cramps' curses are the worst. Fane, if you don't bring us a child by Christmas, you will be bound to the human world for the rest of your days. Wait, <laughs> no, not a, a kid. Can't go after a kid. I am scared of kids, I lamented. Exactly why you need to prove to us that you can handle this. Unless you bring back a bona fide kid, you aren't allowed back. So I suggest you get started. The clock is ticking, Nick added. I will do my best to try and not look terrified in front of them. The truth is, I'm scared stiff. Christmas was 12 days away. Now, uh, they were asking me to go out and find a kid, take them from their parents, bring them back here. It's like asking an orc to go shop for a mace. Give them only an hour to choose. and Totally unfair. I just kept thinking about what would happen if I didn't listen to them, though. You know, stuck in the human world forever? I knew a halfling... That had happened to before. His name was Pan. He was so ashamed of himself, he changed his name to Pete. Kept chasing shadows all day until one day he just flew away. <laughs> Never came back. I think pirates were involved. They, you know, fairies. And Pete was told that he would need to stop chasing shadows or else he'd wind up stuck on an island with pirates. I didn't want to wind up like Pete, so I immediately started asking around the house where I could go to to find a kid. Do they sell? <laughs> Do they sell them in stores? The elves told me they came from houses. The reindeer claimed it was a European thing. And Aunt Lucy said that most kids would run and hide if they saw me anyway. 
So what you need is a disguise. Otherwise, your Christmas will be very unhappy indeed, Lucy told me as she took me to her wardrobe. She paused and pet her lion as we entered before showing me her most bewitching clothes. These are filled with magic to hide you in the human world. Try one and see if you think it suits you. Most of the outfits looked absolutely ridiculous, ranging from a clown costume to a superhero suit. Are you sure these are completely necessary? I asked as I put on one I could actually fit into. It's bright red with a scraggly beard. Reminds me of Uncle Nick, so my skin was nearly lime green. Made me look like an overripe banana with marshmallows on top. I think it suits the assignment. I just don't understand why I have to do this. I mean, can you give me some of your devil voodoo magic, Aunt Lucy? I asked her as we left the wardrobe. The lion snarled at me, and Lucy had to turn it back to stone before remarking, I hate to tell you this, nephew, but the others are right. Can't just shirk responsibility. The rest of us are out here doing hell's work, and you are just making us look bad. I mean, we already are bad, but you know what I mean. Lucy said as she pushed me out into the cold. Now go snatch a kid and make us proud, she shouted. I felt like my wings were going to freeze off, making me wonder how I was going to pee, especially wearing this stupid suit. And now I had to travel all the way from the Arctic Circle to wherever kids were at. Called an Uber to make things easier and posted a listing on Craigslist. Figured since they didn't say I couldn't make things easy for myself, it wouldn't hurt to give it a try. Seeking one child medium size for sacrificing ritual before holiday season. <laughs> Must be potty trained. That should do the trick, I thought as I sat back and waited. Surprisingly, by the time I made it to the city where Lucy told me the best kids were to capture, I hadn't gotten a single response. Guess I have to do things the old-fashioned way, I said to myself, as I paid the driver in fey coins and made my way towards the center of town. A few humans gave me odd looks as I walked down the chilly road and made me wonder if maybe my costume wasn't working. But then, as I was distracted by a delivery truck, I nearly ran into the owner of what looked to be a consignment store. Hey, well, it's about time you showed up, he snapped. Uh, I, I'm sorry? Is, is there a problem? I asked. I called the Santa agency three hours ago. You're late. I have kids lined up to sit on your lap, he said. I peered inside the department store window and saw the snot-nosed brats all staring at me wide-eyed and confused, and I realized he thought I was there to pretend to be my uncle. <laughs> what a great opportunity to find a kid. Couldn't have been luckier, to be honest. Pfft, yeah, sorry. I, I, uh, I can begin right away, I told him as he checked me out and commented. Do you have a skin condition? I am a Republican, I explained. He nodded in understanding and guided me inside to the big throne where I was expected to sit, and I glanced at the line of children. I felt like I was at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Okay, which one to choose? The first child eagerly jumped into my lap. Yo, I said, feeling like I was talking to a dog. How do you talk to human kids anyway? You're not the real Santa, are you? He asked with a whiny face. <laughs> well, no, but that's okay. The real one is a prick. What? No, Santa's amazing. Yeah, and what do you know, kid? If it weren't for Santa, I wouldn't even be dealing with this crap. Don't talk about Santa that way, he screamed and punched me in the stomach. The department store manager gave me an ugly stare. I was doing my best not to crumple over in pain and cry my eyes out. I had to play it safe or I could lose my gig. These kids were worse than wild animals. Why can't kids be more like snakes? Squirrels. Don't scratch that. Squirrels are worse. The remainder of the day was more like the same. Kids were just complaining to me about their wish list for Uncle Nick. Not a single one was interested in being kidnapped. It's frustrating. And one parent filed a restraining order on me, whatever that is. When it was all said and done, it felt like I had accomplished nothing. I need to smoke a pixie dust, I said to myself as I snuck out the back and lit a roll in the alleyway. I leaned against the wall. I thought I heard the most peculiar sound. It sounded like someone squeaking and sniffling. I walked about trying to find out where it came from and saw a small young girl crouch in the alley and looking sad. I was thinking she was probably crying. What's wrong with you? Parents died? I asked. I wish, she sniffled. Well, why not kill them? I asked. Because I ran away, she shouted, looking up at me. She didn't seem scared, but she didn't look dangerous, either. Yeah, that does make assassination attempts harder, I agreed. I looked at the ragged clothes and messed up hair, a bit surprised by how malnourished she looked. Hey, hey, you don't happen to have any diseases, do you? 
take a few steps back. It'd be one thing to be stuck in the human world forever, even worse if I was going to die from running those. I got my measles shot last week. I'm fine, she insisted. Then she took a harder look at me and commented, You're not even... You aren't like the normal Santa, are you? What was her first clue? Well, for one thing, you're green and you aren't fat enough. She snapped back. Listen, kid, I just got the gig. Besides, who are you to lecture me, Miss Runaway? I have a name. It's Isabella, she shouted at me. It started to rain, so I told her we should go over to a diner to talk. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers, she muttered. I ignored the obvious that we'd just been talking for a good 20 minutes, and instead introduced myself. I'm Fane. Now we aren't strangers anymore, are we? Fifteen minutes after that, Isabella was on her third helping of pie as I tried to figure out how I was going to get her to the North Pole. It was starting to get colder outside, and the rain was becoming icy and hazardous. Not exactly the perfect weather to travel on foot. With all the reindeer and comas until the actual flights on Christmas morning, my options were very limited. Or rather, trying to find a way that could fit my already hectic schedule, and one that would convince this child to join me. But before I had a chance to think that over, she started to leave the diner without a coat or even a fourth slice of pie. Hold on, uh, uh, where do you think you're going? I asked, as I heard distant sirens off in the distance. I felt a chill run down my dead spine. Is that the polar police coming to get me? I'd be dead in two minutes if that polar bear snatched me right up. It's a blizzard. I can't stay here. I'm a runaway, remember? Maybe I can help with that. Where are you headed? Surely not out into this mess, I said nervously. I was imagining giant penguins popping up at any moment to flip me to death. Are you some kind of creep? She snapped. Then she kicked me in the kneecap and ran away. I fell to the snowy ground and cussed to myself as I watched her run off, realizing my chance at stopping this curse was slipping from my fingers. Maybe I should just take my chances with the demon penguins. Hold it! I snarled as I chased after her, weaving between cars in the parking lot, trying to see where she had left. The blizzards were getting stronger, winds were blowing away part of my disguise as I saw her struggle to endure the blistering cold. It really sounds terrible, but I kept praying she would trip, or something would block her path. Maybe a penguin could regurgitate her. Instead, she was waiting for me at the back alley, her own back to the wall as she snapped, her teeth chattering. Don't you come closer, or I'll make sure this is a Christmas you don't forget, she said, as she whipped out a can of mace. I didn't have the heart to admit that I had been dealing with far worse since before her generation existed, and that mace would probably make me cry tears of joy. It warmed my little dead heart to see that she was defending herself so... Poorly. To be honest, her whole concept of escape was a bit ridiculous. It made me skeptical that she had a plan at all. Told you, I can help. Let me at least make an offer, I suggested. She hesitated. I needed to pitch a good plan now or she'd slip away forever. You hate your parents, right? That's why you're running away. Well, I can get you to Santa Claus and you can ask for new parents. I know him real well, I told him. You must think I'm a complete idiot, Isabella snarled as she started to run past me. Hey, I shouted as I kept moving to grab her. My costume fell off completely and I collapsed into the snow. Shit, I shouted as I spat up some blood. The girl turned around and saw me in my true form. Immediately, she ran up to me and kicked me in the nose. <laughs> you don't work for Santa. You're a rotten old goblin. You're with the IRS, aren't you? Listen, kid, all I want to do is kidnap you. Can't you at least cooperate? I snapped back. Kidnap me. Is that the opposite of running away? She asked as she kicked more dirt in my face. Will you please stop doing that and let me explain? I said as my entire getup fell away. The jig was up. My true fairy form was seen. I was lucky no one else was around or my wings would be clipped. And to be honest, this girl was so fierce that she was starting to scare me. She could probably take me down if she wanted to. This is your last chance, troll boy, or I'll make you eat mud pies and it better be the truth, Isabella warned. Santa said he wants a kid for Christmas to show all the presents and toys early. You can judge me and see if the t you can judge and see if the toys are good enough for all the boys and girls around the world. I said, "Okay." I said, "Okay, that was that was a bald-faced lie, but I was tired of having to chase this kid and worried that I wouldn't find another willing victim." That sounds pretty cool. Why do you need to kidnap me then? Isabella said skeptically. Because Santa wanted it to be a surprise. You weren't supposed to know until we get there, I told her. 
She seemed to mull it over for a few seconds before spitting on her hand and extending it to me. Only shake if you're telling the truth. I, um... I, I despise the idea of, uh... Of having, of having to touch a germy human hand. But I simply had no choice. Once we had finished making the pact, Isabella looked about and said, So, uh, how do you get there then? One of the reindeer? Uber, I told her. Oh, that must be one of the new ones, the child commented. I checked my phone to see if there was anything in the area to give us a lift, but the snowstorm had blocked all reception and... Might know a guy somewhere downtown that can get us where we need to go. Come on. I'm going out on a limb here, if I'm being honest. But now that I had a willing kid to offer up and save my sorry meat sack body, I wasn't going to lose it. <laughs> it was in the bad part of town, rubbed down and dilapidated, trash everywhere, and vines growing in between cracks. But I could see I was right on the money. My old friend did live here. You sure this guy is safe? Isabella asked as she looked at the used needles and broken bottles. Larry <coughs> is a top-notch dentist. He can get us the transportations we need, I told him as I knocked on the door. Well, I'm scared of dentists. Why didn't you mention that earlier? She asked as she started to back away. Everybody's scared of dentists. It's like the law. But Larry is special. He has connections, I told her. I don't even know what that means. Then the door flung open and Larry was standing there, drunk as a skunk and high as a kite. With tooth necklaces all over his body. Well, yo, 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 my old pal Fane. Did you come for another filling? Larry said, slapping my back and shining his gold teeth to Isabella. And who might you be? He asked. Wait, you're the tooth fairy? She screamed in shock. What's wrong with him? I asked as we were taken into his shabby apartment. I thought tooth fairies were all girls, Isabella said softly as she saw all the varieties of tooth memorabilia that Larry kept like looking at a room full of hunting trophies. And I suppose you think all mermaids are men. Larry snipped. No, that's just silly, the girl responded. Huh, hey, uh, okay. <laughs> we need to get to the North Pole, Larry. Uh, can you help us out? I asked. He coughed and showed his shark teeth. <laughs> it looked like they needed a good brushing. I can, but what exactly is in it for me? He asked. I knew that Larry was an outcast in Faye society. See, nobody, nobody wanted to be near him because he was a weirdo. But maybe if I could scam him to help me, I might have a chance. You know <laughs> how the elves have been on, like on and on about equal rights, all that shit. Well, someone put something in Santa's pipe this year and they want some options for dental coverage. I figured maybe... You have a few resources to share, I told him. So you're suggesting I humiliate myself by offering floss services to penguins and polar bears? Clary asked. I cringed. So did Isabella. Apparently my idea didn't sound very good after all. Something tells me that you aren't exactly telling the full truth about this mission of yours, Larry commented as he poured us some coffee. Or at least I, I told myself that's what it was. It smelled like... Manure. As I drank it, and tried not to let my tongue burn off, he added, but that's okay. I figured that my showing up will likely cause so much fuss that I don't need any extra incentive. He pulled a lever on the back of his room, and a secret passage opened up behind the gallery of tooth trophies. Come on, then. No rest for the wicked, Larry announced. Isabella sipped her warm coffee and side-eyed me. Should I be worried this is some kind of racketeering scheme? She asked. How do you even know what that is? I asked back. I watch CNN, and my dad does anyway, she commented. Guess I need to get used to saying things in the past tense. You're fairly smart, kid. How old are you? Seven? Three months? And you ran from home because of bad parenting, is, is that it? Yeah, my parents wanted me to go to Harvard. Bunch of pricks. Is that why you decided to run away? Too strict. What do you care? She hissed as we followed Larry down to his car garage. He unveiled the vehicle we were supposed to take, which resembled a giant tube of t toothpaste with wheels. Behold, the Colgate Mobile, he announced. I couldn't believe he was actually proud of this thing. It's. Oh, it, 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 though, it's certainly something. Isabella actually laughed. 
Of course it's toothpaste. <laughs> this thing is a joke, right? We'd stick out like a sore thumb flying around this thing, she said as she started to do a roll and handstand. I didn't think it was that funny. I mean, in fact, uh, <laughs> I was panicking. How is I going to make it back to the North Pole in time? This baby can go from zero to frosty breath in just 30 seconds. It can get you to the North Pole, Barry explained. He hit the cap near the edge of the tube, and the paste went everywhere with a low gurgling sound. The entire vehicle lurched forward, and the wheels almost fell off. Okay, well, she might not look like much, but she's got it where it counts, Larry said as he opened the hatch and told us to get inside. It smelled like mint. As we crawled inside, I ducked my head on some teeth and commented, You really took this tooth thing to the next level, didn't you? I figured if I'm trapped here, I might as well enjoy it, he said as he started the engine. It sounded like an old man farting. Isabella chuckled, and I sighed. It'd be a long ride to the North Pole. We didn't quite make it there in one piece. See, the, the toothpaste went up in farts about an hour away from the destination. Uncle Nick has a safety perimeter, and honestly, I'd forgotten all about it till the giant gliding toothpaste started to shake and Larry woke up, desperately grabbing the controls to stay on course. We're gonna crash, Isabella realized. She was right. The ice was coming up to us fast. I acted on instinct and shielded her as the vehicle crashed into the surface of the North Pole. The shield doing its job all too well to keep us unwanted crafts out. As I managed to recover, I checked the little girl for injuries. I suddenly cursed myself. I didn't want her to be in any harm now, and it worried me to think that I was becoming attached to her. Oh, so get it together, Fane. <laughs> Your job is to get this girl to the big wigs. I looked across the frozen wasteland. The bright lights of Santa's workshop off in the distance. I helped the girl Isabella to her feet. You all right? I asked. I've been through worse, she said nervously, as I also looked for Larry in the wreckage. Our wacky dentist wasn't as lucky. Teeth around his neck had impaled him directly in the face. It made me cringe to see it. Isabella had to look away. So much for thinking I might be able to use the toothpaste plane again if things went south. But I had to stay focused. Grabbed Isabella's hand, moving towards the main workshop that was in front of us. You'll be fine, I told her as we kept walking. It was cold. My entire body shook. I was starting to realize... I was already feeling the effects of this deadly curse. I mean, how the heck did humans handle this all the time, I thought. All I could think about was treating Isabella for my immortality again. But I mean, uh, but some part of me was guilty. It was it right to bring this sweet, innocent girl that had gone through so much to the slaughter? I mean, in reality, I was starting to think that there was something wrong with me mentally. I shouldn't care about this human. I thought, as we got closer to the workshop, we were only about 500 meters away when Isabella got stiff. We had reindeer stared at us across the river. They smell fear, I told her as she pushed past magic woods, and the reindeer began to follow. I knew they likely hadn't eaten in weeks. Perhaps months of Santa had waited just to get them lean for Christmas. Well, that's just great, because I think I need to piss myself. Those things are huge! Isabella snapped at me. The reindeer were almost right on top of us, their jaws dripping with saliva as I realized they wouldn't hesitate to devour us as fodder. Okay, okay, <laughs> no worries. So on the count of three, we're going to run, I said as I stepped backwards towards a frozen lake. One, two, and then she bolted across the ice without waiting for me. <laughs> Immediately, the reindeer plowed past me and started towards the girl. Shit, are you serious? I shouted as I crawled back up and tried my best to imitate a female reindeer call. Anything to distract them. But these starved creatures weren't going to be easy to sway. Isabella was not very meaty, but with them being so hungry, I doubt it made a difference. I whistled as loud as I could, causing a swarm of deer to turn towards me, and I shook my fat belly towards them. Hey, don't you want some of this instead, you mangy mooses? I paused, trying to remember what the plural of moose was for a second. As they slammed their hooves down on the ice, and it started to crack, and then I had a horrible idea on how to keep Isabella safe. I started to jump up and down on the frozen lake, the fracture growing stronger by the second as I did. The hooves of the heavy reindeer weren't helping either, as the, a moment later, the ice began to break. Altogether, me and the Christmas caravan fell into the chilling waters below. I saw Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, and Vixen. 
Flail their hooved feet frantically to escape as they plunge into the water, their wings becoming frozen solid as they even tried to fly away. Comet and Cupid were circling each other, trying to create some kind of whirlwind as I kept sinking, thinking to myself, this is how I'd likely die. Frozen and ice trying to remember the names of Santa's pets. I then felt the hand grab me and I, I was pulled up. I flopped onto the lake surface like a fish out of water and gasped for breath. It was... It's Bella. She rescued me. I was surprised by her thoughtfulness, but I didn't want to show it. Jesus Christ! Next time, don't waste so long. I have icicles in my lungs now. Oh, sure. Next time you can drown, she said, as she saw the other reindeer fly towards the main tower of the North Pole. Where are they going? Reporting to Santa. Wouldn't be long. They'll know we're here. I commented as we left the icy lake and circled towards the workshop. I thought you were supposed to be here. I bit down on my tongue, feeling guilty for leading her into a trap. Yeah, so, uh... Listen, Bella, uh... About that, I never got to say another word. Suddenly a trap sprung from underfoot, and we found ourselves in a net dangling upside down as the elves laughed and snickered from the forest. Vane, looks like you made it almost in time for the annual eve party! The head elf commented as he eyed Isabella. And you brought the main course! So that's what Santa meant when he said that you were on special assignment! The elf commented as we were lowered down. Immediately, a dozen elves surrounded Isabella and kept her from wriggling away. I saw panic and fear in her eyes, along with something else. Betrayal. Fane, what's going on? What are they talking about? She asked frantically. I didn't even look in her eyes as the elves hauled her towards the workshop. The head elf slapped my back heartily. Don't know why people enjoy doing that so much. Relax, she won't be squealing for much longer, he said, and then gave me a ticket to the express to get to Christmas Square. Hey, you'd better go report to Santa how well you did. She will be proud, he said. I looked down at the ticket, realizing this was my chance to get back to a normal life for myself. Krampus and Santa would both stop bothering me for good, and I could be immortal again. Then I looked towards the workshop, and I crumpled up the ticket. This wasn't right. I, I, I could feel it in my fey toes. I went ahead and boarded the train, though, taking it quickly to the main plaza. Hundreds of elves were already there, cheering excitedly to worship Santa as they finished their year-long labor. Santa was drunk on eggnog and forcing them to sing as I arrived, and I scanned the crowd for a sign of Isabella. I mean, she had to be here somewhere. I knew they wouldn't sacrifice her to the tree until after the eve party. And then I spotted her, right there on the main platform alongside Granny Krampus. It looked like the little girl had been crying. The elves were all cheering eagerly for the ceremony to begin. I want to thank everyone for their hard work this year. It's truly been a crazy Christmas, hasn't it? Santa said with a belly laugh. And let's hear it for my nephew, Fane, who braved the human world to bring us a fresh child, Granny Cramps announced, even as I tried to sneak towards the stage. A massive spotlight from the top of the tree came down and focused on me, causing me to freeze in my progress and wave nervously to my two relatives. Don't be shy, Fane. Come up here, Santa said, as I was led to the steps. I started to wave toward the crowd as they cheered and Stuck me right next to Isabella. Hey, boy, boy, looks... If looks could kill, I knew this kid... Oh, this kid would kick me in the nuts. Christmas is from now. Others will hear of your story and realize that Faye aren't so bad after all. You'll be famous, Uncle Nick announced as he turned towards the girl and offered me a cutting knife. At the same time, the other reindeer that hadn't already been cloned from the icy lake came down with a sleigh filled with toys. Santa was about to leave. And now, as is tradition, we ask you to offer this child up to the tree god and make this Christmas a bright one. I knew what I was expected to do. I mean, I, I, I could see the girl trembling, ready to face her own demise. She didn't expect anything else but more betrayal from me. The elves were chanting my name. It felt good you know, to be recognized and <laughs> respected. 
but this wasn't how I wanted to spend my Christmas. I raised the weapon up, Bella closed her eyes, and I slashed the knife across her bonds. The ropes fell down, and I grabbed her hand, racing from the stage to the sleigh. There was utter confusion, and I shoved her into the passenger seat and pulled the reins. The deer shook and neighed as Santa was calling for his elves to stop us. Then the sleigh lifted up, and about half the toys fell off, cascading towards the crowd like miniature bombs. You saved me, Isabella asked, stunned by my sudden change in decision. And then she hugged me tight. Yeah, 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 stop. Don't start getting mushy. I'm sure I'll likely regret this tomorrow. Then I heard what sounded like a rocket. It was actually an elf missile. It struck the side of the sleigh, and I struggled to keep it in the air. Why would Santa really crash his own sleigh? Just to get revenge, Bella asked. Another missile hit the side again. More toys toppled over the side. I, I, I think we're about to find out, I realized as the deer broke loose and the wooden sleigh crashed headfirst into the workshop. Thanks to our seatbelts, we didn't go flying. But the entire thing was broken into shattered pieces of wood everywhere across the workshop. A moment later, I was surrounded by elves along with an angry Uncle Nick standing at the edge of the workshop. What is the meaning of this, Fane? He bellowed. Look, I can just leave the girl alone. I, I changed my mind. I've decided to be banished. It's better than being your lackey 24-7, I decided. The fat man laughed so hard that it made the workshop shake. I can't let you leave. You made me look like a fool. I'm sorry, Fane. The only way out of here is through me. Then he took a large candy cane and used it as a weapon, pointing it toward me. I grabbed a smaller candy cane to defend myself and told Bella to get down, stay out of the way. Rip him to shreds, Santa, Granny Cramps shouted. A bell rang out in the distance and Uncle Nick smiled. You're lucky that I'll make this quick. For the first time in my life... I was glad I wasn't really fat. I used my nimble form to avoid Santa's blows and began the fight. The elves kept a tight circle around us as we parried with our candy canes back and forth, the massive bits of candy striking each other like fencing weapons. This continued on for another couple of minutes. The same jabs and pars towards each other. I felt dizzy as I stabbed at his belly trying to find a weak spot. It was like stabbing at Jello. My heart dropped as I realized maybe Santa was a, you know, an immortal god himself. Could he even be stopped? As we fought, the battle moved towards the square again, the crowd pushing us towards the tree. I tried to spot where Bella was hidden, but it was hard to notice anything in the wave of elves. Distracted for a moment, Santa kicked me towards the tree and snapped, If Bella won't be one sacrifice, then I guess we could use you. He pinned me down as a bell rang across the Christmas square. The gigantic tree was starting to come to life. Last year, I would have said, seeing this tree was a sign of reliance on the process and a blessing for our North Pole. Now, as it widened its giant wooden mouth and started to snarl and drool, all I could feel was... dread. Come on, Fane! Get up and fight! Whose side are you on? I asked frantically as I ran around the backside of the tree. Technically, I bet on both of you! I had to think fast to become wood chow. My options were limited, so I started to climb, thinking that staying on its back would keep me safe. The tree started to scream and shake, try to get me off, angry and hungry for its annual meal. Then I looked towards Santa... And I had an idea. Jumping from the tree, I stood right in front of my uncle and shouted to the tree, Come on, eat me, you big old redwood! The tree roared and moved towards me, moving at lightning speed to devour me. At the last second, I dropped and rolled to the side, and Uncle Nick was swallowed up. In the next few moments, the entire square went quiet. The tree was still chewing on Santa. His belly laugh turned to screams of pain as the tree straightened up and reverted to its original form. Krampus was the first to talk. You... You killed Santa Claus. I swear, it felt like... I was either going to be trampled or be dunked with Gatorade like a football coach. Then the elves started to cheer, and I realized... Eh, I was thankful that it was the latter. All hail Fane! The wicked Santa is dead! Bella was brought up and hugged me tight, punching me in the gut and saying, Don't ever do anything that stupid again. I smirked and tried to figure out what I had just done. Can't make any guarantees, kid. That Christmas Eve, we partied alongside Krampus and the elves. I mean, with Santa dead, Granny said that a lot was going to change. Christmas will still happen, but we have better service around here. Maybe even a new sporting center, it commented. Krampus also had to break the bad news that the curse given to me was 
well, not gonna go away. Sadly, Santa was the only one who knew the way to undo it. And well, he's lumber fodder now. Yeah, that's fine. I think I'd rather go live in the human world anyway, I told him. At the gift exchange, I offered Isabel an apology with a doll. Is that supposed to be for me? She asked. It's the least I could do. Kind of is. No, it's pathetic, she said, tossing it aside. Then she grabbed my hand and said, Can we just go home now? It struck me as amazing. This child would still want anything to do with me, given what I had just put her through, but it warmed what little bits of a heart I still had. So now I am her adoptive guardian, and we live in a small town outside Michigan. I look like a human now, completely thanks to the curse taking full effects. And I work as a department store Santa, part-time, just like before. Except this time, I tell kids that I killed Santa. I mean, that's, oof, that always gets me a few ugly looks. There isn't much more to tell about the story, except, 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 maybe, I get Krampus to visit Isabella's original family. You know, give him a gift for their mistreatments of her. And, um, you know, thanks for letting me realize the human world isn't so bad. I think they're now roasting at Aunt Lucy's house, and their screams, ooh, huh, let me tell you, those, those help me sleep at night. See, Bella said that she wants a copy for her room, too. You know, just to remind her how lucky she is to be here now. It's gonna be hard to top that Christmas gift, huh? Told her with a chuckle. She mulled it over and smirked wickedly. Well, there's a few bullies back in school that I need her to visit, too. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you so much for watching tonight's video. And if you guys are not listening on the podcast, then I strongly suggest you check out Spotify. The Mr. Creepypasta Storytime podcast on Spotify is exactly what you see here on YouTube. Or if you're listening on the podcast, I strongly suggest you check out YouTube. The Mr. Creepypasta channel on YouTube is the exact same thing you see on Spotify. So uh, really, there's no reason to cross platform unless you just want to see more things or you want to see more of me, which you can also do on Twitter at Mr. Creepypasta. And as always, I want to give a big thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. That includes everybody who's been waiting for me to update my Patreon, and I thank you all so, so much for being so patient with me. But especially, I want to give a thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fenske, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Tristan Pelton, Acid System, Adam Garrick, Aaron Stormcrow, Ika Limchok, Amber Clark, Angelus, Atomorous, Bastion Beefcake, Blue the Enigma, Braden Morris, Broken Beast 320, Captain Scurvy, Caspian, Shelly J, Corey Kenshin, Cronut 509, Crusader Chocobo, Cryptic Nightmares, Curse Pox Primark, Dakota Lane Whetstone, Daniel Paulson, Darth Miver, Deleted Account, Dirt Diver 030, M, Esteban, Fester's Lampshade, Freddy Krueger, Goreg Tri Magazine, Grand Moth the Milky, Hades Nephew, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Harley, Himbo Jerry, Horseman Sec Time, Insanity Gamer X, Jay Cairns, Jesus Cornell, Jordan Humble, Justin LaFontaine, Kaylee Ambrose, Kiri the Sloth, Crazy Kid, Cryolinian, Lambda M98, Lisa Cottrell, Little Crow, Lord Life's Best, Lupita Galvin, Love You Eminem, Matt Bach, Melted Lake, Michael Allen Jr. Bashirs, Mike, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Nate Cull, Nico Kyle, Psychomo, Red Shadow Cat, Rob Like Sharp Things, Sam High, Sashi Sasaku, Seclude, Stricken, Tally Sue, Tater Chip, That Creepy Chick, The Ginger Bros, Turtle Man, Voice of Sand, William King, Xavier and Cheyenne, Yargul, and Zachary Graphius. If you would like to join this list of names that I horribly mispronounce, then please head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, or you can always check out the names in the description down below, and I appreciate it infinitely. So thank you all on Patreon, thank you all so, so much, and to everyone, sweet dreams. <laughs>